working on a series of paintings um, using drawings from my old sketchbooks that I had as a child and um, old notebooks. And I'm turning these into large scale paintings, years old. And the first painting I saw, it seemed so big, was uh, Willem de Kooning's uh, Pink Lady from the Pink Lady series. And I just responded to the thick richness of the paint, you know, just like this. I love, I love paint. I love what it does. That's why I like the randomness sometimes it was easy for me to always be making art. And so I had these sketchbooks and I would draw and draw. And my mom, bless her heart, saved all the sketchbooks. And so I have today, like, a little history of myself. Um, some of the drawings that I did were on big sheets of paper which started to mold and so in this series, the childhood series, um, I've actually used some of those papers because they were going to just mold and rot so I would apply them to the canvas with gel medium and then paint over them. I hate this in my paintings is when I get fussy. I had this idea of um, I would depict the sun when I was drawing throughout the years in different ways. I would always draw, I mean we lived in the sun and I loved the sun. So I thought it would be fun to have in my painting a, a sun, a sky full of suns. But they're too literal and I don't like them and they're too fussy. And when I was painting this it was really fun to paint all those little lines. but. That's probably why I drew it that way in the first place, but it's too fussy and I don't like how this sky looks. It's not like this ground I like better. It's more about the paint. So um, I destroy parts of my painting, um, if not the entire painting, many times through the process. So you get to watch me destroy it, but first I'm going to try to mix this perfect blue. And if it isn't perfect, I'm okay because and then it, be, then it gives me an opportunity to paint over it, and then there's more layers. And um, I pick, I love oil paint. I love the consistency, and I love the body of it. Um, and so we're going to get a nice brush for that. And I want a nice, like, early brush. This brush I've had since art school. Um, we've, we've been through a lot. It's kind of getting loose, but I love it. It's actually I better use it. It's speaking to me now. Oh, it's so it's too damn fussy. And cerulean blue is the answer to my problems right here. So I'm gonna find a nice other deep blue. And so I'm going to my little basket. Oh, here's some good colors. Around here. The sun isn't in my paintings when I paint plein air because it's not around that much, but clouds are. Uh, I think painting in the Northwest is a great opportunity to paint clouds. I'm always looking at clouds, and I've, you know, being a plein air painter, being able to go outside when it's nice out, um, to me that's like sketch, sketch, sketching, um, studying. It's like somebody putting a big still life out. I came in this morning and I'm like, oh, for God's sakes, what did I do? Why did I do that for so long? And sometimes, maybe we won't even have a sun in the sky after all. Just nothing. But I like having some of it peek through. When some of it peeks through, it gives it more layers. This painting beforehand was going to be wind dancers because I, I found an old sketch that I did in Mexico that that's people flying through the air and I called it wind dancers and I really thought that was a really cool idea and um, this looks like some California raisin ad or something um, so I'm gonna actually now use just turpentine to get this off because this really sucks oh god destroyed this I've painting like three times already and the only part I didn't touch was here because 
Um, I like that it's just stained canvas with an oil stick. Uh, that adds a whole nother tip texture and then the contrast of the orange over really rich for me and I may even continue it after the show because it has helped me really explore like why I've tried to fight being a painter a lot and now I'm a woman of a certain age I'm just accepting that I'm a painter finally after all these years um, you know, it doesn't always make sense in the modern world. Oh, I want to be a painter when I grow I up. I get the ideas but for another painting. Um, I really want to paint a painting of just the people flying through the air. I think white on black. I'll paint them in white and have the background be black. So I have a, paint, a canvas primed outside so I can do that. But... You know, I keep getting ideas that could just keep me Two in the things that forever. inspire me. Okay, three things. Three things that inspire me the most in my studio. One is this picture of some family members of mine. It's there, you know, we were from California and the East Coast, but I think this was in California. And I love it because there's they are they all have books and they're sitting around really casual. There were a lot of writers, and this one I li I just love her smile. Just a so. framed piece of paint. It's silver and I it's not a it's just a bunch of paint. Love it because I'm in love with paint, and um, this is somebody from my family too, but. One day I used the back of it kind of for a palette and I just really love this and I really want to bring this kind of thing and this kind of thing to my artwork more. This roughness, this rawness of the paint itself, of the material, that's what got me painting in the first place. That's what I responded to in the decooning. Probably it helped that it was a pink lady because I loved um, drawing ladies. So those are two things, three things. And thing now when I paint outside in my neighborhood, I'm painting houses. And here I was doing this funky textural embroidery thing of houses and the curtains. There's just my this rawness um, that reminds me, you know, of this this kind of thing, you know, and I, and I, and I want it, it's almost like my adult life, all that stuff makes it hard for me to just go raw. I'm not an abstract painter, but I want to bring that painterliness into it. Um, and it's hard to articulate and that's why I keep trying to paint it.